We have been looking at the book of Joshua, and today we will look at Joshua chapter 7 and chapter number 8. And uh, more so I want to look at chapter number 8 because of the positivity of it. And just touch chapter 7 because it is so negative, you know. But deal with the positive because it's always good to look at the things that God has done and so that we can enjoy in the presence of the Lord. I know you are not... Um, uh, you cannot be bored by the word of the Lord, so I will read uh, a couple of verses in, the, in chapter number 8, because there are so many, so many verses in chapter number 8. If we read all of them, uh, yeah, there are many. I want to read verse 30 to 35 so that I can... Uh, jump a, a, a bit of it, but start with verse 1 and 2, then go 30 to 35, then I share God's word. Now the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. Take all the people of war with you and arise. Go up to Ai, see, I have given into your hand the king of Ai, his people, his city, and his land. And you shall do to I and its king as you did to Jericho and its king. Only its spoil and its cattle you shall take as booty for yourself. Lay an ambush for the city behind it. Verse 30. Now Joshua built an altar to the Lord God of Israel in Mount Ebal, as Moses the servant of the Lord had commanded the children of Israel, as it is written in the book of the law of Moses. An altar of whole stones over which no man has welded an eye unto, and they offered on it burnt offering to the Lord and sacrificed peace offerings. And there, in the presence of the children of Israel, he wrote on the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he had written. Then all Israel, with their elders and officers and judges, stood on either side of the ark before the priests, the Levites, who bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord, the stranger as well as he who was born among them. Half of them were in front of the Mount Gerizim, and half of them in front of Mount Ebo, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded before that they should bless the people of Israel. And afterward he read all the words of the law, the blessings and the cursings, according to all that is written to the book of the law. Verse number 35, there was not a word of all that Moses had commanded, which Joshua did not read before all the assembly of Israel with the women, the little ones, and the strangers who were living among them. Blessed be the name of the Lord. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. I said we are looking at chapter number 7 and chapter number 8. And chapter number 7 we can summarize it by saying this. In chapter number 7, they are beaten up by a small city. In chapter number 8, they beat that small city. So the question is, what happened in between? They were beaten, and in chapter number 8, they fight back and win the battle. So the seventh chapter brought defeat to them. And it was one of the worst defeats that the children of Israel ever got and ever experienced. Because the city was small. The city was little. The city was not as big as Jericho was. Was not as fortified as Jericho was. But they lost this because of one man. And his name was Achan. Achan disobeyed the Lord. Because God had said, destroy Jericho. But silver and gold and precious stones, those who carried them, for the house of God. But the rest, even the king, destroyed them. But the Bible records that Achan got tempted. He carried some robe that was there, which was from Babylon. It was wonderful. He carried it. He carried some silver. He carried some bronze that was supposed to be kept for the house of God. And he sinned. The victory was won. They were celebrating the goodness of the Lord from Jericho. But then when they were going to eye, they were beaten because they did not know that one of them had done what was not right before the Lord. He had picked the things that were not supposed to be picked 
by him. And yet you would find out it is only because he was not patient. Oh, may God help us to be patient. Oh, be, just be patient before the Lord because your time is coming. Because the Bible tells us in Achan, when God is speaking, in, in, uh, in I, when God is speaking, if Achan had waited, for I, the Lord says, go in, destroy it, take everything for yourself. There is something that you need always to be alert. There is something for God and him and himself, and there is a time for you. There is, God will always make sure he balances the act for you. But some of us are not patient. We want it now. Na kama siyo sasa, tuwa itaka sasa hivi. Lakin tunapo mgojia buwana, atakuja wakati wake. So because of that scene of Akan, they were thoroughly beaten, if you like. They lost. The other thing that I know why they lost is because they never consulted God. Oh, we have won the first one. We can go on and win the other. And I tell you, the most dangerous part of you or the experience that you can experience is after you have won a battle. Where we ambao meowa is after the wedding. So if you are listening to me, the battle starts. That wedding after you, you might say, oh, it was fantastic or, or this. But it is after that you start, you have to be ready. After every winning, we are coming out of a storm. Be ready for another one. Prepare yourself. Don't assume that there will be no more storms. I've done this forever. You see, there are people who preach that once, once you, are, you got saved, your flesh is dead. Your flesh doesn't die. Your flesh does not die. It lives with you. And you have to fight it until we get over to where the Lord has gone to prepare a city for us. So Achan sinned, and because of Achan, that was dealt. And I want to say, now because Achan is judged in chapter 7, and stoned in chapter 7, and burned in chapter 7, and there is a heap in chapter 7, it's easy now for us to say that sin is dealt with, that which was uh, evil for us is dealt with. Now I can walk in the newness of life. I can live and show the fruit of my repentance because Achan has been dealt with. And I say this, sin chocks the channels of God's power. When sin comes, it chocks it. When sin is, but when sin is dealt with, the channels open up and God's power can flow once more. And my prayer is that whatever sin had chalked, may God come and open up that, that whatever was chalked so that he can, he can flow. You know, there, there is something that I'm, I'm, I'm wondering where it is, where I can find it, but I know I'll Google. If I tell my, my children, I'll tell Google it, and I'll Google. But this is it. There is something that is coming every time I'm in... Si unajua si muzetu hazina siri. Sasa unaletewa mapicha utaki. Ama ni yangu tu inaleta vitu zitaki. Unataka kupigia mtu. Alafu unaona mapicha nyingine zimeretu wa siyasa na nina kathalika. Kuna kakitu kamoja kanaletu wa nikazuri sana. Nina kaangalia kambaka kanaisha. Ni kapoda. Kapoda. Unaweka kwa sink. Ai. Kanafanya majabu. Kanaenda huko na wana. Kau kanaenda huko. Unaona maji inaenda. Sua. Kanatoa kila kitu. Hai. Nina kaangaria ya kanaisha. Unaweka kwa cho. Kanaenda huko chani. Kule ime block. Kanaan block. Until I'm wondering. Kapoda. If you find it, please. <laughs> Not because it is blocked. But, but I would imagine. Every time you would be putting it. It will never block. And. And you know the power of God is the same. When we allow it to come into our hearts, it unblocks every part. There is a flow and there is victory that comes our way. But in chapter number 8, now the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid nor be dismayed. Take all the people of war with you and rise, go up to I. See, I have given it unto you. The difference is, now God comes again to Joshua. In chapter 7, they took a few people to spy, but they never spied. Oh, they never spied. <laughs> you know, one time I wanted to start a church in a city, one of the cities in this country, because one of the pastors here wanted to be a, past, a pastor. 
and I wanted to help him open a church in one of the cities in this country. So I, I paid for him. I don't know whether Gashuru can remember because Gashuru is the oldest, one of the oldest LCC members. But I, we paid for him a house for one month to go in that city, do study, study, and we told him what to study. Study what excites these people. Ninini nawa excitaga. Ninini nawa fungaga. What binds them? Because every city has the power that binds them. Go check. What are the customs that woo the Christians away from the grace of God? How many estates are there? How many churches are there? The good church, why do people go to those churches? The worst one, why do people not go to those ones? Yani, when they eat a zuri, when they eat in a kutana kwachini a miti, ujifundishe mambo mengi, alafu urudi. Akaenda siku moja. Akaangalia. Akaenda kwao. Alipo kuja ni kamuliza. Ulika uko ye, niambie. Uliona ni estes gapi? Hajui. Ro inafunga watu wao? Hajui. Makanisa? Hajui. Sani ni kamuambia ndugu yangu. Ro nami ya naniambia. Nisikutume uko. But however, I thought, because that city is a good city. Now we have a good church. I called one, two bishops. I told them, let's meet in that city. So we met with Bishop George and Bishop Oselu. We went to that city. And we called a few Christians. And within a very short while, we knew the demons that terrorized that place. We knew the spirit that is that place. We knew the power that we need to deal with. We knew the kind of a person that needs to go to that city. What type of preparation he needed. Finally, we took somebody there. That city has been subdued. But these guys were sent to I. I think they went around. I said, Musikuji watu wengi. Musikuji. Musikuji watu wengi. Kujeni watu ngiritatu tu. Ngiritatu tu. Hiyo itawachapa wataka chini. So in chapter 7, we are told those guys, when they went, instead of beating them, they were beaten. And that six of their people were killed. Now, the 36 affected the whole population because the 36 simply meant there is a father, there is a son or a daughter or children that became fatherless. There was a wife who became a widow. There is a clan that lost a warrior. There is a nation. that So there was a lot of wailing. They were all crying. No wonder they get to chapter number 8 and Joshua had to consult God and God had to come. Because he had obeyed God and did what God told him and destroyed Achan and Achanism, now he's ready to move in. So he's told by God what to do. Now the Lord says to Joshua, don't be afraid. Don't you think God is repeating the same thing he had told him earlier? He's repeating what he told him in chapter number one because he had told Joshua, as I was with, your servant, with my servant Moses, sure, so I will be with you. Only do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I will go with you and the battle, I will win the battle for you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Because God will win battles for us. Let's allow him to win the battles for us. Two or, one or two or three points that I think I'll bring to you. And then I'll be out of your way. Number one, there is a promise. There is a promise. God gives Israel once again the promise of victory. It is very similar to the same promise that was given to Joshua before the battle against Jericho. Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. That is similar to what God had told Joshua at the beginning of the book. In chapter number 1, verse number 9, Be of good courage, do not be afraid, do not fear, do not be dismayed. In other words, God is putting them back to the foundation. If I've gone away from the foundation, God wants to bring me back to the foundation. Secondly, God is reminding them 
of the basis of their victory. Your victory is not because you know so much. Your victory is because I have declared it. The Lord has declared it. He's reminding them that they do not need to be afraid because the Lord is with them. When they went to I, the Lord was not with them. But he's telling them, I'll go the second time. I am with you. They don't have to be discouraged because God is with them. If you want to do some very interesting study, look at the word fear not in the Bible. Follow it and study what is there. And you're going to be amazed at what God is telling his people. Fear not. Because we are living in a land and a world. And we are living in a time that has a lot of fear. But God says to us as his children, don't be afraid. I am with you. Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. He said like that to all the people, everywhere. He's telling us not to be afraid. Go up to I, Joshua. I have given the king into thy hand. There is victory promised. And we have been saying, whether I'm in a storm or getting into one or coming out of one, one thing is sure, there is no storm that will last forever. God will give me the victory that I need. Psalms 37 and verse number 23. This is a good verse to quote. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his ways. Verse number 24 also brings up to that reality, that though the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord, there are times when we f will falter and fail. There are times when we make wrong steps and stumble and fall. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hands. We have the promises of God. We can claim victory in our lives. Hallelujah. We can claim victory in our lives. God says, I have already given it to you. Now you can claim it. We have to mix our faith with the promises of God. Mix it. The promises of God, put your faith in it. And God is going to be victorious for you. Two people, out of the conference that has ended, I was sharing with someone, two people, they, they have wrote back and said, the message that we received, one of them says, God has paid the time. The time, the years, the cacao ate. That was a testimony. That God had paid it back. Not, not, not easy. It was not easy. But God has remembered this person and paid it. So the, the person is saying, I, I agree with the Bishop Masinde that God has a payback. God has a way of dealing with my wasted years. He has a way of paying back. The other person says, even as he listened to the sermons that were coming and there were promises that were spoken out, even on Monday, God had remembered this person financially. That which appeared like it wouldn't, the prophecies that were prophesied on Monday, comes to pass. Now that is the God that I trust in. Of course, we don't publish a lot of testimonies. Utusweke mtu hapa alafu, tukamwega kwa shida. Ati amepewa milioni sigiste, kwa sababu amepata wezi watatu. Arafu kwa okitui, kue na shida. Siapewe tu chini chini ya maji yawe. Tuone tu ameanza ku, kuyeyuka yeyuka kwa sababu ya baraka. Anyway, testimonies are good because they excite me. Me, I was excited when I heard that. So I mix my, my, the, my faith with the promises of God because I know there is a miracle that is going to take place as I do that. Akam's problem is that he wasn't willing to wait on the Lord. But they that wait upon the Lord, the Bible tells us, will renew our strength. Number two, victory is pursued. Victory is pursued. And I'm going to read a couple of verses again. Verse number three says this. So Joshua rose and all the people of war to go up against his eye. And Joshua chose 30,000 mighty men of war and sent them away by night. Remember, they went 3,000, they were beaten. But God now gives them a strategy, and the strategy is, is for 30,000, not 3,000. What I learned from here is this, that God will always have a plan. And the plan that won yesterday 
Man, don't use it today. Don't go around I and believe I the walls will fall because I has no walls. The walls that they have, you can fight them very easily. It's not as thick, it's not as wide as Jericho. So there are battles. You need to ask God to give you the strategy for the next battle. Let me, let me tell you. When I was, when I was pre preparing to get married, my battle was only one, to make sure I don't see anybody else to confuse me along the way. Because I knew, <laughs> you know, one of the things that I knew and I think we used to share with Alice is the minute the heavens knew that we were getting married and we were in love, a lot of guys went to visit her. <laughs> and I had a lot of friends. You know, I used to go to high schools and preach. I had a lot of friends. I have to, my battle was, God, baka tuone hii siyo mungu. Akiwa siyo mungu tuachanie pale. Kwa sasa ni wahubiri. Unajua watu wakukunyu wakawa na kuwacha huyu muna kunyu na mwingine. Hiyo siyo kwa wahubiri. Wahubiri utai kunyu wakawa na watu yegi sana. Utai uchuda na uchuda je. So vijana muko hapa musikunyu wachai na watu yegi uchuda je. So when I got married, my battle changes. The gear changed. Now I have to be a father. The battles of a father is, are not the same as of that boy over there. How about the, the battles of being a father-in-law? <laughs> are they different? Yes. 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 I can see some of you shaking. But it's so sweet to be a grandfather. And everybody is saying, usumpe, usumpe, because those children are so sharp. I look at my phone and I see they have already opened, their names are all over, they have their own uh, uh, password and so on, in my own phone. Who can ipatia iyo iPad? Laptop. It is not my responsibility to know what they do with them. I'm not a father. <laughs> and I know my children are watching. Please, do your... You are the father and the mother. But the battle, the victory is already there. God is telling them the victory is there. So they are pursuing that victory that is there. But they have to hear what God, the instruction that God is giving. For Jericho... Go around it six days, the number of men. But on the seventh, do it, the completion of God. Go seven times. So seven, six days, once every day. Umemaliza binadamu. Now do it God's way. Seventh day, go seven times. And on the seventh time, blow the trumpet and the war comes down. But for this one, I want to go, go and fight. So he's going to fight. But he's going to put about 30,000 men, not a straight battle, but in the bush. You know, when I was preparing this, I thought, one time a very powerful nation was in Africa pursuing some, some bandit somewhere. And they did it for a couple of years. But they lost so heavily because the guys know the, tra the terrain of where they are. So they, they lost a lot of Although they have powerful, powerful military, they lost. Kenya army. There is a place called Suguta. I don't, you know, every time I think, if I was the president, what would I do about Suguta? Burn it? Do, but they tell us, that is a place when you enter. Nikitu ingine. Kuna makaves huko, kuna vitu, ni dunia ingine. So somebody has to agree to destroy Kabisa kama Jericho. Hii ni suguta ikue kila muti umekua vumbi. Kila mulima umekua tambarari. I don't know whether we can do all that. But here you are, the battle is changing. The battle is not going to be fought the same way. There are some strategies for this battle. It will be in the bush. 
And God is telling Joshua, the people of Ai are going to come out, rushing out of the city, and you are going to run like you are being put to a flight. Yani muko pale munapigana na wajama. Alafu ametoka, mume kimbia munatoa vumbi. Jama wana sama, to guwaya toto. Yani everybody is after this ke guwaya and so on. But after they run after, 5,000 others are waiting. When these ones are running at those, this one enter into the city and burn it. Now those ones, they see smoke. If, 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 if a battle like that one happens, what happens to the people in between? Si wata unawashika pole pole kama getono. Iyo getono. Ninini? That's a problem of thinking in Kikuyu, trying to translate into English. The strategy that God gives to win the battle of Ai is completely different from the one in Jericho. That says to me that our God is not a boring God. God is just full of surprises. Our God is planning strategies for every battle that I'm in. So I need to consult God for all the battles. When this one, Lord, I'm a father. How do I win fatherhood? Lord, in this one, I'm a father-in-law. How do I win the, in this one? Uh, oh God, I am a grandfather. How do I win this one? And very soon I'll be a retiree bishop. How do I win as a retired bishop? Battles. Battles. We have to allow God to help us in all those battles so that as the battles are won, we have the victory to bring to the Lord. For Jericho, the battle was fought during the day. But for I, the battle is at night. So there are some battles, friends, that God will allow you to fight during the day, but others the Lord will put you during the night. Others in the morning, others in the evening. God is the one that will give you the strategies to win. You know some of the battles that you're going to win, you'll win it with a pen. Kalamu. Kwa sababu ni ya darasani. Darasani ya itake mtu kwenda kuwa manandimi. Ukiandika nandimi mwarimu anasema, it cannot be understood. One of the things that I did not like a lot when I was doing some course somewhere was every time I wrote something to Mwalimu and he would not read. He would just use a red pen and cancel the whole thing and ask, where did you get this one from? <laughs> In other words, nilikuwa nimejifanya ni mimi nilikuwa na Na mwalimu anasoma anana hiyo kizungu si ile ya kimani. <laughs> Unajua kila mtu ana kizungu yake. <laughs> Did you know every one of us have their own kizungu? Oh, again, I'm so there are some battles that you will win with a pen. You can only win a pen. When you follow the plan of God, when you follow the strategy of God, when you get in step with what God is doing, you can be sure that God is going to give you the victory. So the second battle of I they say the first battle, they lost. But the second one, they won. So what would I call this someone? I would call it God of a second chance. Because the first battle, we lost. But the second one, we won. Have you ever lost a battle? I have lost a few. Have you ever been defeated in life? Yes, a few times. But God is able to give you and me a second chance. The biggest problem is when you think you can't. But God is able to give me a second chance. Have you blown it in your Christian life? God is willing to use you again. Don't think that God looks at you and condemns you all the time. No, I failed. Right, but God has cleansed me. It's only the devil who wants to laugh at me. But God knows I failed. Maybe I have a scar over my failure, but God is still willing to use me. Hallelujah. God is not only God who punishes sin, he is also God who forgives. There is no contradiction here between the two. That is perfect nature of God. On one hand, he is holy. 
and he punishes sin. But on the other hand, he is love and he loves and forgives us. God will give you a second chance. You are not through. You blow it at work, God wants to give you something else. God will give you a second chance. Ask him to forgive you and give you power to go through it tomorrow. Oh, maybe you have blown it at home. God wants to give you a second chance. Maybe you have blown it with your children. God wants you to give you a second chance. Claim victory in Jesus. And because God is a God of a second chance. Jonah, believe it. God told Jonah to go to preach to Nineveh. Jonah said, not on my life. And he took off in the opposite direction. He got himself into a whale, a whale of mess. So he went into that whale of mess. And God had to straighten him out. In Jonah 3 verse 1, the Bible says, the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. Oh, I'm talking to people here that the word of the Lord is going to come to you the second time. Your relationship in your family, God is going to give you a second chance. For you that missed in your pen because you're going to win that battle with your pen, God has given a lot of us a second chance. You know, I like saying there was only one university when we were growing up. Some of us missed the door because there was a lot of people. But God still came. Now you can go to any university that you want. On Vika Road, we have a number. God is awesome. He can give me a second chance. When God gives you a second chance, take it. Take it. The word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. There was a guy called Mark. Mark left Paul and went back. He left Barnabas and went back. He left Paul and went back. But finally, Paul is saying, bring Mark to me because he is useful. Mark is given a second chance. Now, please give somebody else a second chance. They failed once. What they will fail again. I know there are some of us who say, ah, who you? Who you are shindwa? Who shindwa maramoja? Jameni, maramoja. Who me shindwa marangapi na mungu badu anakupatia kibali na neema? I'm speaking to even couples that are here. Failing. Your spouse will fail a few times. But you have to understand, and this is what I think you need to understand, that there are some battles that you don't need to fight. They are useless. They don't add any value. But the ones that need value, Alice will say, Maivi, akiuliza swali ambalo alina migu, Unaenda garage, unatafuta migu, unaweka migu, ili gali, iweze kwenda. Na mimi ni naongeza hii leo. Alice, maybe the, I want to add this today. Kwa sababu, ukikataa kuweka migu, utoe engine, hiyo gali ya itaenda, milere yake. So, mka wako wameuliza swali ya kijinga, weka migu, ili gali yendele, uzitoe engine. Watu wengi hapa kazi yao ni kutoa engine. Sasa mnakaa na kitu haiwezi enda. Hata mkiomba mumwage mafuta ya drum, si mshatoa engine. Kwa hivyo swali la kijinga, weka migu, gari iendelee. Gari la kijinga lina migu, weka engine, gari iendelee. Ati kwa nini sura yako iko namna hii? Ukijibu hilo swali na kijinga utatoa engine. Lakini tafuta, takuta ka story. Devu zangu ukiziona zina kuwaka nyingi hapa. Na huku wakuna. Saa mtu wanaeza kuhulia. Na kwa ni ndevi yako inatoka pale. Kuna kahadithi. Weka migu. <laughs> oh my goodness. And time there we are. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And I want to, to get into the third place to the third point here. But I want to say this when it comes to the battles that we fight. One president in the U.S. called Woodrow Wilson was a president in 1913 to 1921. 
what he's giving his final speech, he said this. The sum of the whole matter is this. Our civilization cannot survive materially unless it is redeemed spiritually. In verse 30, where I read, it says this. Now Joshua built an altar to the Lord in Mount Ebo, as Moses had said, that is verse 31. He has just won the great battle of Ai, representing the flesh. Now he leads them on a march 30 miles up to a place called Shechem, where Mount Ebo is. And there they, they, they have a little Bible conference. How did Joshua do that? It is because Joshua understood something many people don't understand. And the president of the U.S. 1913 to 1921 knew it. The sum total of any civilization cannot survive materially unless it is redeemed spiritually. There is a need of an altar. God puts it this way in Proverbs 14, 34. Righteousness exalted a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. So Joshua understands they have to be right spiritually before they can successfully or militarily win a battle. And you need to understand that. So they have to do the unusual situation. They find themselves here. On Mount Ebo, Joshua builds an altar. In the Bible, every time you see an altar built by a godly man, it is a picture of the cross of the Lord Jesus. There, showing the people see what the Lord can do. And there, he built an altar with a specific instruction on how to do it in verse 31. On the stones of this altar, they are to write out the laws of Moses, which is the word of God. Today, the word of God is not written in stones. We write it in our hearts. But we have to make sure we build an altar for God. The word of God is not an outward matter. It is an inward matter. 2 Corinthians 3, 3, God has written the word in our hearts. In verse 32 and following, God gives through Joshua, the people, a magnificent object lesson. This Mount Ebo was a sister mountain to another mountain that is called Mount Gerizim. And in between there was a valley between the two mountains. And between them was a village called Shechem. To the south was Mount Gerizim. To the north was Mount Ebo. So in the book of Deuteronomy, God through Moses had said to the people, now when you get into the promised land, you're going to divide the people up. We are going to put half on the tribe of, of the tribe on Mount Ebo, which is on the mountain, the mountain of Cassings. We are going to put half of the people on Mount Gerizim, which is the Mount of Blessing. Then God was going to let Joshua read the cursings and the blessings. So he goes back to Deuteronomy 27. And I want you to go there because we are just about to finish our sharing. Deuteronomy 27. Here God gives some specific direction about what they were going to do when they got into Canaan. Mount Ebo and Mount Gerizim. Verse number 12. They shall stand upon Mount Gerizim to bless the people. Mountain of blessing. In verse 13, it says, Thou shalt stand on Mount Ebo to cast. Do you see what was happening there? Here again, Joshua is trying to go back to the promise of God. And there is something symbolic here that we can also find in the New Testament. Before we get to the, to the, to the New Testament, it's good for us to know what is happening. In Deuteronomy 27, verse 15, Cast be the man who makes any grieving image, and all the people will answer and say, Amen. So those who were on Mount Ebo, when the curses were read, they were to say, Amen. And those on Mount Gerizim, when the blessing were read, they were to say also, Amen. I want us to try that. We are going to divide our church into two mountains. Don't you worry. Hallelujah. This side up, you are on Mount Gerizim. 
place of blessing. This side up, for now. For now. So that we can echo what is happening. You see, we are building an altar. We are declaring something here. So, le le let's try this. Let's try Mount, Mount Ebo, curses, Mount Gerasim, blessing. So when I read, and I'll read just a few. When I read a curse, those on Mount Ebo say, Amen. Ebo to Jaribu, Amen. When I read a blessing, those on Gerasim, they say, Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, let's try. Cast be he that setteth right by his father or mother. Blessed, blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed thou shalt be in the field. Cast be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark. Blessed shalt thou be when you come in, and blessed thou shalt be when you go out. Why was God doing this? God wanted to impress on the people and he wants to impress upon us that if you obey God's word, you will be blessed. If you disobey God's word, you will be cursed. In the Gospel of John, we find a very interesting story. Gospel of John chapter number 4. A woman comes now in that setup. Whew. This woman we know, she's a woman of Samaria. She saw Jesus sitting where? At the well that was dug in Shechem by Jacob. She goes there. Remember we said one time there is Gerasim and one time there is Abel. And she starts to talk to Jesus and he say, Jesus says, Woman, give me some water. I need to drink. And the woman says, No, we can't do that. That business, we don't do it. Then, Jesus tells her, then go call your husband. Call your husband. And the woman says, I don't have. At that time, she's getting, she's the one getting more thirsty than Jesus. She's getting more thirsty. Where is this story taking me? Go call your husband. She said, I don't have. Then Jesus says, you are right, you don't have. Because even the one you have who is the fifth is not yours. Then this lady becomes religious. Eh? Religious. And religious people would ask something like this. And maybe you could be here. Is it right? Who is right? The Methodist? Is it the Baptist? Is it Deliverance? Is it PCA? Is it Anglican? You become just religious. It's neither Anglican. It's neither Deliverance. True worshippers must worship God in truth and in spirit. I want you to say this. She says our father worshipped in this mountain. And she pointed out Mount Gerasim. So where was she? She was in Mount. Why did not she hit? Because God wants her to see where you are. You are under curse. You need to go where there is a blessing. And Jesus is saying, I want to give you that blessing. So when Jesus pointed out the fact that she was a sinner, by saying, go call your husband, Jesus is trying to tell her, don't run to Gerasim. Stay where you are. See yourself. You need a savior. But praise God. Praise God because Jesus stretched his hand and called her in. Do you want the mount of judgment or do you want the mount of forgiveness? Do you want the mount of mystery, mystery or do you want the mount of mercy? Do you want the mount of cursing or do you want the mount of blessing? It is according to you which mountain do you want to stand on. Our Heavenly Father, we want to stand on the mountain of blessing. Where our movement, our families, our children are taken care of. Where, dear Father, the battle that we fight, you have already won it for us. Because the strategy that we are going to use is you that is going to give us. When Joshua was able to obey it, he won I, just like he had won Jericho. When they never disobeyed, I beat them up. You are a God of a second chance. Give us another opportunity, another chance, and we'll be careful, Heavenly Father, to honor you in this life. And dear Father, be prepared for the life to come. I want to give you honor and to give you praise. I don't know where you are. My friend may be watching us from the, from the comfort of your room. We are talking about two mountains. Which one do you want? The mountain of blessing or the mountain of curse? The mountain of blessing, you have to obey the Lord. 
And the Lord is calling you today that you can know him, whom to know is life eternal. Would you like to give your life to Jesus so that you can be on the mountain of blessing? If you do, I want to ask you to pray this prayer after me. Is it just a simple prayer? But you believe it because if you believe in God, then God will find a way to make a miracle for you. And the miracle he wants to do for you now is a miracle of salvation. Lord Jesus, I come to you. I know I'm a sinner or need of a need of a savior. Come into my heart, save me. Make me the kind of a person that you want me to be. And from today, I'm a child of God because I believe in your saving grace. If you have prayed that prayer and you believe in your heart, there is a number you can use on our screen. Use the number on our screen and call that number and somebody will pray with you and guide you and lead you to more truth. May God bless you and those that are in church, may the Lord give you a week of blessing. Stay on the mountain of Gerasim and receive the blessing of the Lord.